Farm scale permaculture course is over and we had a good time. People are left today, so no better way to start the morning than finding edible mushrooms. <laughs> Pasture-raised turkey. This is, this is that with right? gravy with uh, mushrooms collected from the forest. Ben spice. What's here? This is uh, swede and carrot and swede. Carrot and swede from the garden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And we got potato. What's that? Tiny French name is here. Both from raw potatoes with Ooh. wild mushrooms from surrounding forests. What mushrooms have we got? Latin names. Uh, Belitus edulis. Ooh. The sep. The penny bun. Yeah. The penny bun. What a feast! And you also got red currant sauce, penny bun, Boletus edulis, porcini, nice the sep, Stein peels in German. One of my favourite mushrooms ever. Highly deadly. Yeah. Highly in the in the Amanita family. Um, I could just. Cats. Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely not a, a blusher. That's a yeah, that's a panther cap. I should imagine. It could even be a washed out Amanita muscaria. No, this panther cap. Nice little Boletus edulis. Prime. We're just outside the market gardens. I mean, we don't have to go far. To yeah, that's mushrooms. another panther cap. Okay. This coral mushroom. Beauty. Probably a uh, Romaria, but it's uh What's this not... one? That will be, I should have, yeah, that looks like a Rusula. Let me have a little look. If it's a Rusula, it should have, um, mm, yeah, maybe it's just wet. It's quite granular on top. I'm not gonna, not gonna taste this one because I'm not 100% sure it is. Oh yeah, yeah, it is, it's granular. But it's not in the nicest state, so I probably won't bother tasting that one. This oh, one's yeah. a good example. The Cortinarius is the Latin name, but Webcap is the common name. A lot of um, are very unpleasant ones that you don't want to confuse with um, things like Bluefoot and Pied, Pied Bleu, the Pistanuda. What know. are these little uh, tufty ones, Ben, on there? Ooh, I don't know if they're... Uh, they don't look like the sheathwood duff. Probably Could be um, a sulphur tuft, actually. Yeah, probably a sulphur tuft. We just had a little bit of rain. No. A nice amount of warmth. All the mushrooms popping up. Look at this little beauty. Primo. Come something else because they don't fit this genus, but. Um, yeah, this is like the, the type genus, the type species. Here's some very curious fellows. Ooh. Ah, yeah. And that would be probably in the club. Fungi group, I should imagine. Yeah, there's lots of pizizers around, like the brown sort of cup fungi as well. Lactarius deliciosus. They love it in Spain and apparently the Russians love it as well. You can, should be able to tell that it's a milk cat by this uh, saffron coloured milk oozing out of it, but this one's been so maggot eaten they've it's not got any milk left. Sheath wood tuft growing on. Is that an old birch? Yeah. Find loads of these on birch. They're really lovely, fried up crispy, but not one to start on for the amateur. I've yeah, they look very similar to the Gallerina marginata, which will kill you. Little Amanita muscaria. My Garrick. I was hoping we would see. That'll be one of the, looks a bit like a morel. That comes from the same family as the morels, I'm sure. Yeah. Animal? No. No. 
I mean, the morel is barely edible. You got, you have to cook a morel, and you have to make sure that it's not grown up in anywhere where there's been uh, lots of lead stuff laid down. There's a couple of mycologists, a couple of collectors that have suffered from lead poisoning from eating lots of morels. That's an unusual looking one. You very rarely get them like that. But yeah, definitely a yellow foot. Cantharellus tubiformis. Delicious little one. Only a little mushroom, but when you do find it, it's normally in big tufts. Sheep with tuft. tuft. Mm. Cunomyces mutabilis. Really mm -hmm. delicious when fried till crispy. Shall I chuck those in your bag, Kit? Yeah. It's that cheese. It's warm. Ooh, it's probably. The duck and geese and the peacock brigade. This is a flush of shiitake from the logs that we soaked. But the slugs get them pretty quick, so I've just been taking them. Neighbour grazing. So this is the, the front field of our neighbour here and we're grazing right up to the road so we're taking all of this field which adds another two and a half, three hectares I guess. It's cute seeing them on the road. What's that? Orange, orange peel fungus. I'm not sure of the Latin name of this. That's incredibly strange. They seem to really <laughs> like this uh, Sandy, wow. disturbed brown, aren't they? Beautiful. Looks almost synthetic. Mm. This is just a good example of how shallow the soils we're working on now, because now the ground's quite different on the farm in different places, but these forests are growing on pure sand. This is a sand pit where people are taking sand as a resource, but you see it's incredibly thin lens on top of these soils. So it's been remarkable to build our pasture soils up to 45 centimetres deep now. Very hard to see from the top quite often, but then very distinguishable because they've got hollow stems that's the Ridges rather than gills. Yep. Tasty, tasty. Mm. So nice. Definitely a Trametes. 100%. Turkey tail family. Turkey tail family. Almost certainly medicinal. On birch. Yeah. You reckon most of the turkey tail family are yeah, medicinal? Yeah, I read an article that the Japanese um, have done a study on. Um, <laughs> about five or six different Trametes species and they were all had um, the polysaccharides that are associated with uh, yeah, the anti-cancer and everything. There's four main types of fungi. You have your saprophytes which eat dead things and where you tend to find the whole organism in one log or whatever. They're the, the edibles that we cultivate uh, like oysters and shiitake lion's mane etc uh, but we're out in the woods looking for mycorrhizal fungi so they're living in association with the tree so you can't dig up a patch of chanterelle or quarsini and move it somewhere else they're attached to the living tree then we have a parasitic fungi in farming that we can inhibit by airflow and spacing plants further apart it's often in greenhouses that we get big fungal problems uh, using silica sprays, which you can make with nettle or chamomile, uh, horsetail, things high in silica, and stop water, stop watering the plants by aerial uh, watering, which spreads spores around. And then we have the endophytic mycelium that uh, runs up between the cells of plants up into the tops of the plants as part of the nutrient cycle. It's really mycorrhizal fungi and saprophytic fungi that we're working with. And it's a fascinating world. There's so much diversity of fungi here in Sweden. These are the winter chanterelle. Very nice. Oh, 
Yeah. You got your knife, haven't you? Yep. Yeah. Everything in nature, looking after itself, taking care of the hole. These little guys are swapping mineral for sugar. I think it. I think it's our malaria. Yeah, honey fungus. What everyone's really scared of being parasitic. It's got them taking out their trees. Yeah, but probably doing a lot of good, turning the tree back into food, back into soil. Nice specimens. Very nice. Still getting the golden chanterelles. La Ovenus. The Finns eat it. The Finns eat a lot of it, but no one else really bothers with it, but they've just found that it has, I think they called it, uh, it's not griffalin, but it's got something that burst, boosts uh, neuron growth. Let's eat it then. So. I need some new ones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. New oh, ones are quite nice, aren't they? Yeah. I think we'll go for these young white ones, shall we? Oh, hang on. <laughs> Forest raised pig to go with their mushrooms. Slow roasts? Yeah, I think we're going to have a very slow roast and then quick roast right at the end to give it a Just bit more it. colour, see, see how he's looking, and then maybe on the fire. Mm. It's like a Chinese sucking pig, that ends. Maggots in any of these, they're like top, top class. I'm just learning the sauna now. Those of you that have been following us, you'll remember we swapped this wagon for four chickens. And we've had a lot of saunas in here this year. It's been an amazing way to get people clean. and It's been working beautifully. Very cheap, low cost, portable sauna. Hot, isn't it? Ooh, hot. Ay, ay, ay. Mr. Sponge, how did it go? Very good. You've got a nice crispy pig. Wow. Oh, Piggy. Ay, ay, ay. Ay, ay, ay. Ay, You ready to eat like a Viking? Da, 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 da. Get out yeah. there, Raggy. Glass. Oh. It's a good noise. So that's it today, folks. It's not about an update from the farm. It's, you know, we're having a restful day and we've been working very hard. We've been planning out the rest of the season now. And it's quite a light and easeful end to the year and really enjoying this time of year. This is the season of the harvest and the abundance. Some people have been inquiring about our book, Making Small Farms Work. It's not for sale right now because we ran out of books and we're waiting for some to be delivered in the next couple of weeks. We'll let you know when they arrive. But you can find out more on our website and follow our page, subscribe, share the videos if you enjoyed them. Thanks for your time. See you next time.